Hey folks, let's learn something new about the oil and gas industry. All right, today, an oil and gas consultant, how to become one. People reach out to me all the time and say, Mark, how did you become an oil and gas consultant and how can I do it? Um, so there is no magic formula and everybody's journeys could be a little bit different, but let me kind of talk you through the stuff that I think you need to pay attention to based upon our own experience. You know, we've made a lot of mistakes and we've kind of figured out how to do this the right way. So number one is, what is your motivation? Um, this is gonna be work. This is gonna be a lot more work than you working for somebody else. And you have to be have some type of motivation to keep you going. So in our case, we like to help people. It feels good for us. That is our motivation. And that's how we've worked that motivation into our business model. So you need to think about what is your motivation to becoming an oil and gas consultant? Number two, you have to determine your skill and knowledge level. Now, an expert is generally considered somebody that has 10,000 hours of experience doing whatever it is they're an expert around. And if you look at the conventional 40-hour work week, that means you need five years of hand-on, real, practical experience doing whatever it is that you want to be an oil and consultant around. Right? That's a lot of time. And I'm not saying that you, uh, you can't start without that five years, but you need to understand your skill and knowledge level. Oil and gas companies are not going to hire you to do a job if they don't think you can pull it off. And one of the ways they measure that is what is your experience? Then, next, you have to define your success metrics. What, is, what are the things that you have to accomplish in year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, so that you know that you're successful? Revenue is part of that, but also in our case, we look at client satisfaction. But your success metrics could be different than anybody else, but you have to figure out what that is. You have to write it down. And speaking of writing things down, you're going to have to build a business plan. Um, this doesn't have to be a 40-page document. It doesn't have to go real deep, but you need to understand what are your challenges. How much capital do you need? What uh, a legal support do you need? How are you going to structure your company? Um, you know, Are you an LLC or an S Corp or an Inc.? Um, you need to have a business plan. Um, there's a lot of organizations out there, um, a lot of them sponsored by things like the um, Small Business Association to help you figure out how to build that business plan. And there's a bunch, of, a bunch of templates out there, but you have to have a business plan. This is a business. It's your business, right? You can't wing it. Now, and this is even bigger than building a business plan. You have to develop a marketing strategy. Marketing is everything. How do you get your name out there, right? How do you differentiate you between the thirty other 30 or 40 people that are doing the same thing that you do, right? How do you get in front of people that you can help, in front of prospects, in front of clients? How do you build that reputation of being an industry expert? All that is in your marketing plan. And if you don't know marketing, you should know a little bit, right? So there's books out there, there's seminars, there's webinars, but hire a marketing expert. And a word of warning here, a marketing expert doesn't have to be this huge multi-million dollar year company. It can be a single person. Um, we got our start that way. Um, but you have to have a marketing strategy is probably the most vital thing to do when you start thinking about starting your own oil and gas consulting. Then you have to learn how to sell. S learning how to sell is vitally important because that's the only thing that's going to bring money into the door. Um, a lot of people think sales is um, distasteful. It's that used car guy, right, trying to make you buy something that you don't want. That's not what sales is at all. Sales is about problem solving, about helping people and helping clients. Um, you can learn sales. It's a science. You know, you can develop forecastable um, sales models that are predictable because it is a science. There's a lot of experts out there. Um, there's a lot of good books out there, but you have to learn how to sell, period, right? Talk to any entrepreneur at some point in their journey, even if they're sitting on top of a $2 billion a year company, in the beginning of their journey, they had to sell, and you're going to have to do the same thing. Then pick a niche. So in our case, we're the oil and gas sales experts. Our niche is how do, you, how do we help other companies sell their product or service to the oil and gas industry? You have to niche down. And the more you niche down, the better off you'll be. I mean, if you want to niche down to the point that you're an SAP consultant for upstream companies and you help them write GUI interfaces, that's perfect. But see how deep that is? Um, but you have to figure out what your niche is. What are you good at? Then. Whether you've been exposed to it or not, you're gonna to have to learn project management and time management. You're gonna be strapped for time, especially when you first start as an oil and gas consultant. So everything you could do to increase your workable, billable hours by doing effective time management is gonna help you. And project management, no matter what you're doing for your clients, for your prospects, it's gonna be a project and you have to learn how to manage that project. There's a, a bunch of good resources out there. You know, Look at PMI, um, you know, there's a bunch of good stuff out there to learn project management, but you have to learn how to um, uh, use project management and time management to your benefit. And then here's a big one. Are you going to be the oil and gas consultant that advises oil and gas companies? Or are you going to be the oil and gas consultant that does the work? 
two different things, right? So over here, when you're advising, people uh, come to you as a thought leader. They want your help, they want your mentoring. They want you to help them make right decisions, but you're not actually doing the work. There's a nice place for that. But over here is when you're actually doing the work, there's also another nice place, because maybe you're doing work they can't do themselves effectively. You know, that's what we do. Maybe you're filling a position that they, isn't worth them hiring staff for, right? But it's still valuable to the company. So you gotta figure out, are you gonna be a consultant that advises or a consultant that does the work? Then. You have to know this industry. You have to know the oil and gas industry, and you have to know the problems that oil and gas companies are dealing with. If you want to be an oil and gas consultant, you're going to have to be a problem solver, and those problems are going to have to be real business problems that, the, that companies are dealing with. And once you learn it, you'll have to learn it again next year and next year and next year. Every year it changes in this industry. So you have to understand the problems that oil and gas companies have so that you can offer them something of value, which is you help them fix their problems. Then. You have to develop your own business process. How do you contract, right? How do you bill? Do you have milestone billing? Um, how do you invoice? How do you do expenses? Just like you're gonna help your, your clients with their business process, right? You're gonna help them solve problems that they have. You have to develop your own business process and it needs to be repeatable. It needs to be written down. Um, then speaking of things written down in business process, Look at what you're really good at and figure out what you can outsource. You know, we talked earlier about marketing. Part of that is stuff like search engine optimization, uh, creating content like this blog, right? I could have outsourced this. Um, we choose not to, but you may choose to outsource this. Look at what is not key billable time for you. Figure out what you can outsource and outsource it. There's a bunch of good um, companies out there globally that will allow you to have virtual assistants for as little as $8 an hour. Take advantage of that. And then here's a big one. You have to be transparent in all your business dealings and you have to be detached from the deal. So when we engage with a new client, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm gonna close this deal, I need to close this deal. No, no, no. I'm trying to figure out if it's the best fit for the client. If it's not, very transparently I say so. I say, we can't help you. And I'm not emotionally attached to closing that deal. Now be real careful here. People will tell me, well, Mark, you need to be excited. You need to wanna do business, yes. But that is different, right? That's having a passion for what you do. That's different than being emotionally attached to the deal. If the deal's not meant to happen, you can't make it happen. You can't make oil and gas companies buy from you if they don't want to buy from you, if they don't think what you do is a benefit to them. So you wanna find out quickly as possible whether they're a good prospect, and if they're not, you wanna move on. And once again, total transparency. Everything we do from business-wise, we talk it through with our clients. The way we price things, we do it with them in the room as a team, right? That's how business is done, um, not, not trying to do things behind doors, trying to fool anybody. So remember, if you wanna be an oil and gas consultant, you need to practice transparency and being detached. Then, why invent the wheel? Whatever you're doing, I promise you, somebody else has probably done it already, so find a mentor. There's a bunch of, of organizations out there with very senior people looking to help mentor people. We help mentor, right? And you have an obligation too, if you're gonna be an oil and gas consultant, to help mentor other people to help keep this thing alive and keep it going. But if you find a mentor, they will help you so much and keep you from making the mistakes they made. And like I said, why reinvent the wheel when somebody else has done? And then here's one we're guilty of. Uh, we haven't got here yet, but we, we know we need to do it and you need to do it. Have an exit plan, right? So um, you can't do this forever. Even if you build a robust oil and gas consulting business, at some point you will have to stop working because you'll be dead. And you want to have an ability to exit even if you don't want to. So typically what you want to do is develop some intellectual property, right? So you have, have your process. You want to develop some technology. And that could be as simple as an app that mirrors your process. So you have that technology. And then you want to train somebody on what you do. Now you have the intellectual property, the technology, and a person that can do the work. Now you have something that can, you can sell, that you can exit. Um, and, and the goal is to have other companies that are bigger than you looking at acquiring you way before you're looking to exit, but you have to work on an exit plan. And then finally, please, enjoy. We love what we do. Um, it, it's a passion for us, and at the same time, we're out, we're, we actually can make a living at it. You need to enjoy what you're doing. If you don't enjoy it, if you don't have a passion for it, you're gonna fizzle out, and your uh, dream of being an oil and gas consultant is just not gonna go anywhere. So folks, I know that we went through a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, like I said, people ask us these questions all the time, how to become an oil and gas consultant. And we hopefully we've kind of talked you through this. If you found this very valuable, can you do me a favor? Can on the side here, can you click these social share buttons? It helps us get our message out to more people. So I hope this helped. We will see you next time.